We did an initial study involving actually medical textbooks, and we found that uh, medical textbooks, which are used to teach um, future physicians, ME and CFS were really rarely mentioned. And worse even, when they were mentioned, um, they actually didn't often have accurate information about them. So the basic teaching materials that are being used in our medical colleges are very negligent and often inaccurate. That has to be corrected. We also have recently done a survey of kind of what does occur in medical colleges um, in the United States. And what we found was, again, these topics are underrepresented and that has to change. There has to be more focus on teaching and actually application and research in medical schools. Um, and until that changes, we're not going to have the people coming through the medical college who are adequate in, in basically providing the coverage that patients need. So this has to be one of the high priority issues that we work on. The research that we're currently doing, um, we think is constantly learning from the past. Um, and yes, um, we're trying to integrate the type work, for example, um, with computers and, and people who kind of understand artificial intelligence so that we can use not just a consensus way of making kind of a case definition, for example, but we can use basically the best sciences in things like data mining and artificial intelligence to come up with case definitions that might be more kind of specific and accurate and sensitive. So that's some of the work that we're currently doing. And we're also, again, trying to kind of look at sort of different ways of using multivariate and more complex modeling to have empiric ways of making decisions and understanding how systems operate as opposed to trying to have just a consensus way of making case definitions or scientific pronouncements. We think that our research has made a difference. Um, in the 1990s, um, ME was really considered a relatively rare disorder affecting kind of the yuppie flu. Um, and at the time that our data have come out in the late 1990s and early 2000s, um, the prevalence estimates that are used by the federal government um, now indicate that they think closer to what our estimates are, a million people have this illness. So yes, we've been able to battle the misperception myth that this is a rare yuppie flu illness, um, and we now think it's basically um, a very significant illness that is not a yuppie flu that affects many more people than were previously thought to uh, have this illness. In addition, um, our research has challenged the term CFS, and we have kind of championed trying to get alternative terms. And there's a number of organizations that are now using um, both MECFS and ME, and I think our research has helped contribute to, to that shift. Um, finally, I think our research on the case definition of comparing and contrasting different case definitions and using empirical methods rather than consensus methods to think about what are the core features and how to measure those core features, we think will continue to make important contributions to the debate that's currently going on on the case definitions. So DePaul University doesn't have a medical school. Um, there's been some talk about maybe some type of alliance with Rosalind Franklin, but it's in the very early stages. We have made some efforts to begin collaborating with people at Rosalind Franklin, but again, that's kind of early efforts at this point. Um, we do think that multidisciplinary efforts are important. So we have an epigeneticist at Loyola that we're working with. We have an immunologist within um, the, Im the nursing department at DePaul that we work with um, on, we have a computer science expert in the computer science department that we work with, and we have people in different universities that we collaborate. So yes, I think it's critical for us to think about multidisciplinary research beyond the particular laboratories of our particular settings, and that's gonna be the future of research, whether we have a particular medical school or not. We have several lines of research that we're focusing on. One is using our DePaul Symptom Questionnaire to gather large databases. 
And we think with these large databases of patients versus controls, we'll be able to better understand which symptoms differentiate these groups. We're using very sophisticated, even artificial intelligence techniques that are empirically based rather than consensus based in trying to help us inform the decisions regarding the case definition. In addition, we're not just interested in self-report issues with our questionnaire. We're also kind of looking at data that involves more physiological, biological measures. Um, for example, we are now looking at college students and trying to find, over time, which one developed mono and which ones don't, and which ones recover and which ones don't. And we'll have blood samples on all those particular college students that will be able to kind of look at what were they like when they were healthy and what's going to happen after they get sick. And that type of longitudinal prospective research is critically important. I might add that we also have an epidemiology study going on with pediatric ME. And that's going to be an important kind of lesson for us to kind of also look at the biological as well as the other domains that help us understand what are the risk factors and how many individuals who have within our youth um, have this illness. And that's something that we'll be working on as well into the future. I think the most important research that will occur in the future is going to involve multidisciplinary efforts that are going to bring pre people in from different disciplines, including computer scientists who have mathematical gifts to help us understand decision trees so that we can figure out what symptoms might be best predictors of illness. We might be able to bring also people in from the best of the sciences, from virologists, from epidemiologists, from people who kind of understand the autonomic nervous system. So really what we are looking for is how do we have people from genetic backgrounds to environmental backgrounds, from public health backgrounds, all to participate in these types of rich multidisciplinary efforts to understand, we think, the greatest challenge to medicine today. Because medicine knows how to fix a broken bone. Medicine knows how to deal with people who have the flu. Medicine knows how to deal with many types of ailments. What's really a puzzle for individuals are these complex illnesses. And as we get insights into the mechanisms that are involved in complex illnesses like ME, we are gonna have a new birth of a understanding of what it is that individuals have to face and how we can better understand the human condition. And that type of research really needs to have the type adequate funding. And we will one day be able to reinterpret kind of different types of illnesses based on what we learned from people with ME. At the present time, there are many economic challenges to countries. And I think that these are difficult times for both basic researchers as well as patients. But I have faith um, and I have hope that basically, you know, we will over time recognize that the greatest medical insights to occur will be involving the patients with the most complex system issues such as ME. And as we get more scientists and researchers to understand this basic fact, my belief is that we will begin to bring together the best scientists in the world to study what I think is one of the most neglected but most important medical illness facing our world. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp at me liggenstreepje cvs vereniging.nl Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chat sessies.